Okay, so we are in our Azure subscription. Let's go to the security center. So the first contact we have with it is the dashboard, which shows you the overall level of um, compliance with the policy, uh, resource uh, or hygiene uh, of security, and the threats that has been detected into your environment. So the first thing we want to see, what is the coverage and what is the security policy that is applied to my environment? So if I go coverage, we see that we have uh, different levels of coverage. The basic coverage, which is uh, free, and the standard coverage, which is um, here display and is enabled for my uh, subscription that gives me all the features from the security center. Now, if I go to the security policy, I here, here uh, have this subscription. And if I go edit settings, I will see that automatically this subscription is enabled for auto provisioning. So any resource that I put up into my environment will be scanned for security and will be exposed through this uh, uh, workspace. We can see that I have automatic email notification and I have security configuration that I can edit. So if we go back to the security policy uh, of my environment, we can see that we have rules related to compute and apps like system updates, security configuration and baselines, uh, endpoint protection, disk encryption, and vulnerability assessment made by Microsoft or by third parties and adaptive application control. We have rules that are related to network and rules that are related to data as well and it's all enabled in my environment so we're going to review in a minute what's behind all of that. So in the overall policy of my environment I can then go back and have an overview of the resource security hygiene. So if we go to recommendation we have a list of all the recommendations that are applicable to my uh, environment and that based on the fundamentals of cloud which are basically identity, data uh, and storage, uh, network and uh, compute. So if we go to the details of those aspects, we can see that in terms of data and storage, I have uh, an analysis of the storage account and analysis of the SQL configuration in my environment. We can see that for uh, networking, we have an overview of the different aspects of network security in, in Azure. So here we have different aspects, like we can see that those internet facing endpoints are not protected because there are no network security group and no next generation firewall. So we have uh, a possibility here to view quickly the different networks and the different uh, uh, endpoints that are on those networks. So if I go, for instance, to NSG on subnet not enabled, I can see that those networks, those uh, subnets have no network security group. So there's no ACLs on the communication uh, happening on those networks. You know, if we go here to the restrict internet uh, uh, endpoint, we see that those IP endpoints basically are not protected. Uh, so it will uh, recommend me to restrict the endpoint of probably incoming TCP connection to RDP, not to every source, but to limited source. Uh, we can see uh, uh, in uh, this uh, demo that we also have something which is called just-in-time uh, VM uh, access, which can help you dynamically uh, sort this, uh, this problem. Another aspect that we want to review here is the next generation firewall not installed. So what does that mean? Uh, here you can see that those IP, uh, I just basically open a bunch of ports uh, from the public IP internet. Now what Azure Security Center is going to recommend me is to add a solution which will do layer 7 inspection on top of this port and not just uh, layer 4 uh, basically ports opening. So we can see that it helps you spinning up directly an NGF firewall that will help you to protect the resources. And this can be a Barracuda, this can be Checkpoint, Cisco, Fortinet, Palo Alto. And if you click there, we're going to basically guide you through the creation of those resources automatically. So it helps you protect the resources in a very uh, guided uh, and integrated way. That's for the network. Now let's review compute and apps. Now, in Compute and Apps, here you see all your computers, all the virtual machines in this environment. And if we go to VM and Computer, we have an overview of machines that are uh, here, all of them by default in Microsoft Azure. You can also click Add Computer and basically download an agent that will allow you to install that uh, evaluation of security on other cloud platforms or on your premises, on, on your data center. 
Now, if we look at the overview, we see that we have a set of uh, recommendation and action items here. We can see that endpoint protection issues, for instance, we have some of our machines in our environment that have either no uh, security endpoint enabled or no uh, or has been uh, detected some malware. So here we can see that they're all, uh, no malware has been detected, but actually uh, uh, some of the VM are no endpoint enabled. So I can directly click here, install on two VM, and it will allows me to select and deploy a security endpoint. So I can dynamically uh, deploy here Microsoft anti-malware on the box right from here, and it will install the, the anti-malware solution right away. I don't need to log in into the server, it's gonna be done automatically from here. An interesting aspect is as well the missing disk encryption. Uh, so as we see here, uh, some of the machines have no disk encryption. So you can enable Azure disk encryption to have additional level of uh, protection, which you will use uh, BitLocker and Azure Key Vault to store um, the keys. Another recommendation that we see here is a web application firewall. So we see that on this uh, IP address, I have basically open port 443 or port 80. And same thing, I haven't uh, do any, uh, haven't enabled any additional protection. So it enables me to deploy either Microsoft Application Gateway, which is our layer seven uh, web application firewall solution, or you can also deploy it from third party vendors. If you prefer Barracuda, F5, Fortinet of Imperva, that's absolutely fine with us. And same thing, uh, you will be guided through the set of the solution. Then uh, we have a security configuration. So we can uh, review uh, recommendation that we give to, to our customers. So uh, in terms of critical warning and informational, you can take uh, uh, action to harden your security uh, uh, environment and your security configuration. So you can see here that the recommendation based on the CCE recommendation, We're giving more information and more background. So this is what Azure gives you automatically, and it concerns Windows as well as uh, Linux. Important aspect, it's not only Microsoft solution, as you already see multiple times for the web application firewall or for the next generation firewall. But also you can enable additional solution from third parties for assessing the security and the vulnerability of an environment. So we have integration with Qualys and Rapid7 at the time uh, of uh, the, this recording, and we can enable automatically the deployment of an agent of those um, uh, solutions on the VM uh, to uh, Azure, and automatically we'll see a consolidated report here of the vulnerability that has been discovered and the recommended action to protect you from that, uh, from those uh, from those vendors, from the example of Qualys here. So you have this central view here, and you also have the view, of course, in Qualys um, solution. So very good uh, integration. Uh, we can enable uh, with many uh, third party security solutions. So I mentioned uh, a couple of them already. You can also add Azure to your CM. So you can connect the security information and even management solution, which is either on a cloud or on your premises. You can connect the log and you can also add additional uh, security from other, uh, other vendor as you can see, as you can see here. Now that we've seen the vulnerability assessment and the security hygiene, just want to show you some of the uh, security alerts uh, that are available. So in my environment, nothing much happening. A very classical RDP brute force attack. Here you can see the IP address, uh, which uh, resources has been um, has been targeted. And you can also see the security alert map. So you can see uh, which IP endpoint has been uh, targeting your machine and you can consolidate that with, of course, other uh, security information that you have in your environment. We can have and we can define uh, custom alert rules. So having um, a specific email when some specific additional criteria are met. And very importantly, you can define playbooks. So a playbook is basically a workflow that will be executed when a security uh, event has been detected. So 
as much as you are building your security environment inside Azure, you will create also with uh, a logic app um, uh, rules that will automate your security response to vulnerabilities that have been detected or security even that has been detected. Now I want to end this uh, overview of the security center with three very cool uh, features. One of them is called Phi Integrity Monitoring and it allows you to analyze the change that has happened into an environment in terms of uh, files. For instance, when a machine has been compromised, uh, um, maybe the hackers have changed uh, uh, some registry key, maybe they have changed some Windows files or some Linux files, then you can enable the monitoring of that and what we'll show you is a dashboard of all the change that has happened inside this environment. So very useful when you're doing security uh, investigation. And another aspect of security that we know is, uh, is complicated is the application whitelisting. So we know it's complicated because it's establishing first a baseline of what code is running onto your environment and then defining the policy of what is the legitimate code that is allowed to run and all the rest will not be enabled on the machine. So Azure Adaptive uh, Application Controls enable to uh, make it very easy to baseline uh, the security configuration of an environment and then deploy policies. So here I did a first group. This first group basically is two virtual machines and uh, it's basically domain controllers. They're doing nothing else but domain controller role. And uh, Azure has detected that basically uh, based on uh, what's present on the system, maybe just a whitelist rule based on the certification on the Microsoft Code Signing Authority is, uh, is enough because there's nothing else that needs to run onto this domain controller. Then you can of course define pass whitelisting or also hash uh, whitelisting rule. So here automatically we have the hash whitelisting rule for the scripts coming of um, Azure uh, CSE so that you can apply a security configuration out of a script to the environment. Now you have just-in-time uh, VM access. I was mentioning previously that uh, when you publish IP, uh, when you publish solution behind an IP endpoint, a public IP endpoint, uh, you are uh, not restricting with the right IP and the right uh, TCP uh, or UDP uh, rules. So one of the things that we allow with uh, just-in-time VM access is enable dynamic network security group to be applied when you need to access the machine. So here, for instance, I have a jump box and I want to say, okay, the port for this jump box is, is open, uh, not all the time, but just when I need to do it. So let's take the example of this jump box and I will say the port 22 will be open on TCP only. And it will allow from the source IP that will be specifying the request and I can pre-specify that or I can force that uh, beforehand. And I can say that the port will remain open for one hour and automatically then would be removed. So I can enable that uh, for all of my uh, public IP endpoint. And if I go back to uh, the solution and to the configured solution, you can see that here uh, we have this machine and I can, I can open request access here. And I can say, hey, I want to have a request on 3389 on the RDP from my IP address and then for that amount of time, so two hours is enough, so I can do open port and then automatically I will be granted and after the two hours that are specified then the port uh, will be automatically and the ACLs will be automatically uh, removed. So it drastically uh, uh, reduces the exposition surface of, of a VM and of course I can then review the activity log, I can review who has asked access to this environment and then I can see uh, the details of the login here. And I can, of course, add activity uh, log uh, alert because it might be interesting that I receive an email when everybody does a request for uh, that particular feature. So that's it for the very quick uh, overview of uh, Azure Security Center.